So a while back, I made a video about my only nitpick with Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, where I didn't like how Tombstone was basically a forgettable background character who was as important as this guy, but since then, I have seen the alternate cut of the Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, known as the alternate universe mode. It's basically a director's cut where you get to see unfinished deleted scenes mixed in with the fully rendered scenes that you would see from the main film, but you get the general idea of what the filmmakers wanted to do before what would eventually be the final theatrical cut. In the alternate universe mode, there's an extended scene where the Spider-Man and women are navigating through Fisk's tower, trying to get to the Super Collider. After the awkward exchange that Peter B. Parker has with Mary Jane, when they enter the kitchen, they are met by none other than Tombstone. I like how coy he's being with all of them, and I love the gag with Spider-Ham. I was like, you know, you look and see, it's like, where's Spider-Ham? There he is, he's butt-ass naked. Like, that's kind of funny. He blends in just as well as everybody else. And they think they're getting away with it, only to reveal that Tombstone's like, yeah, they think we're stupid. Yeah, they think we're dumb. Oh, they are dumb. They are so dumb. Like, that's awesome. Why did you take that out? This is exactly what I wanted. This is what my Nick Pick video was talking about. I didn't want Big Man Tombstone from Spectacular. I wanted a character with presence, like the Shockers and the Tinkerer from Spider-Man Homecoming. I didn't want to have to play Where's Waldo with a Spider-Man villain. If he's supposed to be the right hand to the main villain, the version of Tombstone I'm most familiar with before Spectacular Spider-Man was from the 90s animated series. I fucking love that show. And besides, you don't overshadow Big Willy Fisk, although I think Doc Ock overshadows Kim Bin because she's awesome, but whatever. And then a little after, there's a scene where they're going through Kingpin's office trying to find the entrance to the collider. There's another joke where the Spider-Man Noir doesn't understand color, and it's pretty funny. What a beautiful painting. I love the use of purple. Again, color's not his strong suit. And the, I love this moment where after they go down the elevator shaft, there's this moment where Spider-Man turns around and looks at this portrait of Fisk and his family. And it's like, there's that little moment that I really like. I, I don't know if Peter is sympathizing with Kingpin, like on some deep level he feels bad for him. Not enough to where he's gonna allow Fisk to destroy the multiverse to get his family back, no. But I like seeing this side of Peter that shows humanity. But also, it could be that he's thinking about Mary Jane. Maybe this parallels that scene where he's looking at seahorses. Viewing that portrait means that he's thinking about how Fisk lost his family and that time is precious and he wants to spend that time with Mary Jane, the woman that he loves. And he might not have that time tomorrow. It's just too good of a scene. Again, why'd you cut this out? Every other scene, every other concept in this alternate universe mode, I understand cutting out because either it doesn't make any sense or it doesn't fit with the overall tone of the movie. And it compromises the pacing as well. But these scenes are too perfect. All it would have done was to enhance the experience of Into the Spider-Verse, adding more interactions and more fun, adding just a little more depth, at least with Peter B. Parker. 